I will always hold a deep respect for a game that can craft a deep experience while being delivered in an accessible package. This design philosophy could be described as minimalist. While minimalist games might appear simple at first, designing a truly minimalist game is by no means an easy task. With too many elements, a game will begin to include extraneous mechanics that don't entirely revolve around the central gameplay mechanic. A game with too few mechanics will fail to grab the player's attention, and risks being a shallow experience. Mini Metro is one game that has nailed this balance to create an engaging, minimalist experience that can be enjoyed by the most hardcore gamers to the most casual of mobile users. So how does Mini Metro achieve this balance? Before explaining how Mini Metro achieves minimalism, we first need to understand the core ideas of minimalism as a whole. Boiling it down to its most core elements, we see that minimalism is characterized by a simple appearance that strips away unnecessary elements, leaving only the bare essentials that are needed to communicate an idea. By removing extraneous elements like characters, narrative, and flashy presentations, minimalist art forces the viewer to interact with some core idea with nothing in the way to dilute that idea. Laser-focused ideas are the whole point of minimalist art. Minimalism is not subtraction for the sake of subtraction. Minimalism is subtraction for the sake of focus. In general, Minimalist design tries to get the most value out of the fewest elements. This is where Mini Metro comes in. Mini Metro is a game that has transferred these core elements of minimalism into an interactive experience. So how does Mini Metro create a minimalist experience? Most importantly, the developers have crafted the game so that each element is in service to the game's central themes. Of course, this raises the question, what are the central themes of Mini Metro? On the surface, Mini Metro is a game about building metro lines, but in reality, the idea of a metro system is an amalgamation of smaller, more refined ideas. In a GDC talk about the game, artist Jamie Churchman explained that Mini Metro evolved from Robert Curry's experiences reading metro maps to determine the best way to get from point A to point B. As a result, Mini Metro became a game about decoding maps, experimenting with solutions, discovering how a complex system can fit together, and learning the inner workings and emergent properties of that system. These are the core dynamics of Mini Metro, and all of the game's elements exist in service to these ideas. Perhaps the most obvious example of Mini Metro's minimalism can be found in its art style, which evokes the iconic Harry Beck tube map, which simplified the realistic yet complex metro map into a simple, understandable pamphlet. Mini Metro's graphic design does everything it can to present the player with the information that they need in the most minimal way possible. An example of this can be found in how the game informs the player of errors. In earlier versions of the game, errors could appear in two places. One error would appear on the mouse cursor, and another would appear on the side of the screen. The designers cut the error on the side of the screen because it was redundant, unnecessary, and distracting. The designers also designed their error messages like a bad magic trick. Good magicians create a distraction to redirect people's attention away from what is actually important. However, in Mini Metro, if the player tries to build a line that violates the rules, the error will appear on the player's cursor, because that's where the player's attention is going to be. This error does such a good job at informing the player of the game state, that the other errors could be cut without hampering the game's ability to communicate with the player. The rest of the visual design is similarly minimal. Since the player doesn't need to know how many spare locomotives, lines, and tunnels they have at all times, these UI elements are hidden until the player needs this information. Abstractions play a large part into the visual appeal of Mini Metro. Without abstracting the concept of a metro station into simple shapes, the game couldn't achieve such a simple aesthetic. The game's use of simple symbols keeps the game easily readable at all times. 
The music also reflects the game's minimalist goals. Not only did Disaster Piece create a soundtrack which sounds interesting to listen to, but they also made a soundtrack that could inform the player about the state of the game. When a station is spawning in, a special sound effect is played, so the player cannot miss it. The same is also true for passengers. However, since that information isn't as important as a new station is, it is significantly less noticeable. The soundtrack reflects the minimalist ideal of doing as much as you can with as little as possible. The game could have had a soundtrack which just sounded nice, but the developers chose to have their soundtrack provide the player with useful information over the course of the game, and thus, maximizing its utility for other parts of the design. As great as the visual and auditory design is, it would all be for naught if the gameplay also didn't reflect the minimalist design philosophy. Fortunately, Mini Metro expertly crafted its systems to be simple yet engaging, by cutting unnecessary rules, embracing emergent mechanics, and implementing tight coupling. Mini Metro is governed by a set of very simple rules. Players draw metro lines to connect their stations together. Trains run along those metro lines, picking up passengers and taking them to their desired stations. If a line crosses the water, you need to have a tunnel. Every week you get a new train and an additional choice between two separate upgrades. If a station has too many passengers, it will become overcrowded, and if it stays that way for too long, the game will end. That's essentially all the rules of Mini Metro. These simple rules give the game a low perceived complexity, making it accessible for a wide range of people. While Mini Metro does have a low perceived complexity, the game has crafted its system to create a surprising amount of depth, showing that depth doesn't need to be sacrificed for accessibility. This depth comes from the emergent properties of the system. For instance, there are many different kinds of stations, some of which are more common than others. If a line has too many of a particular kind of station, this will lead to problems, since the train can only hold on to so many people, and if the train doesn't have opportunities to drop off its passengers, it will pass over these stations, leaving these stations at risk to become overcrowded. Because of this, the player needs to decide between adding a station to a closer line with a lot of similar stations, or connecting a station that is further away but might not have a station of this kind, allowing it to drop off more passengers per loop and being more efficient overall. Perhaps the player decides to add the station to the closer line, but moves a different train off of another line to compensate for it. This complex decision arises out of Mini Metro's simple rules, but provides the player with a deep problem to overcome. The game doesn't put any restrictions on how the player constructs their metro, allowing for a wide range of player actions that the developer did not explicitly code into the game. Of course, some of these solutions are going to be better than others, and a large part of the game is experimenting to discover which solutions are the best in the long run, which helps support the game's core ideas. Tight coupling is another technique that Mini Metro uses to get more depth out of its small number of systems. Tight coupling describes a system where interaction with one element will ripple out and affect other parts of the system. The upgrades at the end of the week will significantly impact how the player can build the rest of their metro. Perhaps the player should take the tunnels, so that they can connect two of their lines together. Or maybe they should take the extra line, to take some pressure off of another line. Tightly coupled systems will ensure that the player needs to consider how one choice will impact the system as a whole and this will lead to deeper, more interesting decisions overall. Mini Metro's emergent and tightly coupled mechanics work together to create an experience that is easy to learn, but difficult to master, which is always the sign of a good game. Mini Metro shows us some of the advantages of the minimalist design philosophy. It is able to use its mechanics to focus on a core set of themes with a laser-focused clarity. At the same time, Mini Metro shows us that having minimal mechanics and deep gameplay aren't mutually exclusive. In fact, Mini Metro's simplicity is what makes it so powerful, since there is nothing in between the player and the game's central ideas. 
There are no tacked-on RPG leveling systems, upgrade trees, or superfluous graphics. Everything in the game is there for a reason, giving the game a clarity of vision and a cohesive quality lacking in many games. And that is why I like Mini Metro. Thank you for sticking to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, consider sharing with your friends, since that is probably the best way to spread this video. Also consider subscribing if you haven't already, but either way, this has been Chariot Rider. Have a good day.